I'm gonna unlock the secrets of living in a golf community in Austin, Texas. Whether you're a golf fanatic or just a community-centric enthusiast, I'm gonna give you all the details to help you make the decision of which luxurious lifestyle works best for you. Hi, I'm Nicole Cooper. My team and I get calls and emails from people just like you needing help moving in and around Austin, Texas, and we absolutely love it. So whether you're looking to move in uh, today, tomorrow, or somewhere in between, give us a call, shoot us a text, or send us an email. We're always available to help you find the perfect home that matches your lifestyle. Now let's get started on these golf communities and what I'm going to show you today. I'm gonna to take you a tour through the actual golf courses. I have video footage from when I've played them. I'm gonna give you the rundown of house prices, what to expect, the initiation fees, what the amenities are like. I mean, hey, I played golf for the University of Texas back in the day, so I've played every single one of these golf courses and have intimate knowledge about not only the greens and fairways, but the homes that are listed right by them. The first thing we're gonna dive into are my 10 questions that you need to ask yourself before you start your search. Number one is the cost. I mean, let's be real, the homes cost different uh, price points in different communities and it depends how much you wanna spend and what your budget is as to where that's going to guide you. We have some initiation fees starting as low as $10,000 and some and the highest up to $200,000. Homes on the golf course, some of them you might be able to find under a million, maybe, uh, and then you're gonna go all the way up to the multi-millions if you're on like maybe a Barton Creek or Spanish Oaks. So we're gonna dive into those details, but the first item you need to talk, uh, first question you need to ask yourself is, what is the cost? The second question you need to ask yourself is, do you like the actual golf course? Is it your style of play, long enough, short enough, many tee time, or tee options to, to choose from? So that's really important. The third thing is, how about the amenities? Does it have the extra amenities that you like? Do you need a fitness center? Do you want the pickleball courts and tennis? All those things come as part of the, part of the country club package. Number four, is the location accessible to you? Are you going to live right there at the golf community or are you gonna live somewhere else and commute to golf? That's really important to know if, the, if during traffic times you're gonna have a hard time to get there or if it's gonna be ease of use for you. Number five, the 19 hole ambiance. I mean, let's be serious. After you play 18 holes, you're gonna to wanna to go sit inside, figure out the scores and who owes money to whom. And while you're there, you're gonna to wanna to have a nice, cool ambiance and make you feel at home while you're uh, chatting about all those bets that happened over the course of 18 holes. Number six, are tea times easy to get? Is the club so full that you can't get a tea time when you want it? Or can you get a tea time on the weekend, mid-morning? Seven, is the food good? I mean, really, you're gonna be there a lot, probably, and you're gonna wanna stay for dinner from time to time, and you want that chef to be serving up some really good food. Number eight, what are the events like, the other events? Do you have a family? Do they have ch children's like little tournaments, games, crafts fairs, things like that? If you're a single, do they have uh, fun ladies' days, guys' day out, or if you're in a couple, do they have nine and wine? You know, what type of events are you looking for and do they have them throughout the year so you can have more fun? Number nine, how's the practice facility? I mean, you know, let's be serious. Some of us don't practice at all, but if you're into that sort of thing and you wanna get better at your game, you wanna make sure they have the proper putting greens and pitching areas and chipping areas. Do they offer lessons? You know, is anything included with your membership or do they have access to some good pros there at the club? And lastly, number 10, is the membership full or is it still growing? Many of the country clubs in Austin right now are at capacity. So if you're thinking about doing this, you may wanna get on the waiting list sooner than later. But in addition, you wanna know like if, if the membership is full, there won't be too many new faces in the crowd. If the membership is still growing, then you can count on meeting some new people as they get new members. So just something to think about. Those are my top 10 questions to ask yourself before you start the search for your country club here in Austin. Now there are a few different type of golf communities that you can find. You're gonna find completely private, you're gonna find semi-private, you can live near a public golf course, and then there are some resort communities. So of our private golf communities in town, we have Austin Country Club, Spanish Oaks, the Hills and Flint Rock Falls, Onion Creek, Great Hills, Twin Creeks, River Place, Westlake Country Club, and the UT Golf Club. 
Resort style course, we have Barton Creek. It's a full country club and exclusive to all its members, but it also has the Omni Resort right in the middle of it. So you're going to have a lot of um, weekenders, vacationers, um, bachelors, bachelorettes coming in, staying at the hotel. And so sometimes you kind of lose the sense of community just a little bit of, at Barton Creek because it's so big. And in addition, they allow the um, hotel guests to come and have their play on the courses as well. So keep that in mind when you're making your decision. If you want something more intimate, maybe where the pros and the cart guys and everybody remembers you each time you come, you may think about one of the smaller clubs. At the moment, and we are um, coming into summer of 2024, the clubs that are full are most of them. Austin Country Club is on a waiting list. It's years long and it's you have to know a few people to be able to get in there. Um, Barton Creek, waiting list a couple years long, though they have some, some ways to get in early with some partial memberships. Ask me about that later and I can, um, I can get you that data. Spanish Oaks is full. Westlake Country Club is right at the capacity. I don't think they're full as of today, um, but they're getting very close. The Hills and Flint Rock Falls for their premier membership, they're very close. They may only have a couple memberships left. Great Hills Country Club is full. So they're taking on waiting list. Keep in mind, Great Hills also is about to undergo a course reconstruction. It's still to be voted on. It's not 100% certain yet, but it's looking like they will need to close down for an amount of time to do a remodel just like Westlake Country Club got finished doing. Twin Creeks has some room. Onion Creek has some room. River Place has some room. UT Golf Club has some room. So. Uh, if you're thinking about getting in membership or becoming a member at one of these courses before you buy a house, you may want to go ahead and get on the waiting list before you even get a home. You don't have to own a home inside the community in any of these we've discussed to be able to buy a membership. So wherever you want to play, it just needs to be accessible to where you live, but you do not have to live in a specific area to be able to get membership to that club. So what are the benefits of living in a golf community other than the golf, of course? Well, you have access to tennis, fitness, all the other amenities of the club. In addition to those amenities, it can be a great social life. Almost every club is going to put on activities throughout the year to accommodate families, singles, doubles, help you mingle, make new friends, hang out with old friends, come up and play cards. It's just a wonderful place to hang out with your community of black people. And lastly, it's pretty. It's always well maintained. The grass is always green. The flowers are always fresh at the entrance. They go to great lengths to keep the entire community looking a certain way and absolutely beautiful. So when you arrive home from a busy day or a long commute, you kind of get that feeling of like, ah, oh, I'm home. All right, so we're gonna take a tour by the map. I'm gonna give you the average price point, show you where it's located in town, and tell you whether it's gated or not, what the initiation fee is, you know, kind of the nitty gritty details. So let's get started in the map. All right, we're gonna start with our oldest country club in town, Austin Country Club. It is located on the lake here, as you can see, and it only has a really small section that's gated right around the clubhouse. So there's no kind of gated community that you drive into and just be there at Austin Country Club. So generally speaking, if you're living on the golf course, you're not gonna be in a gated community. There are gated pockets near Austin Country Club and plenty of them, but just keep that in mind that the course itself, generally speaking, the homes that are located on the golf course are not gated. Average close price within a couple of miles around the clubhouse there because there's no specific like area. We're just doing a two mile radius around the clubhouse. It's a million eight hundred thousand dollars on average. The course in its current location was built in 1984 but Austin Country Club has been around since 1899. Pretty cool. One of the courses with the most history in town for sure. As for the amenities at Austin Country Club, they have um, everything you might imagine. It's, it's old school, traditional charm. They have multiple dining areas. They have tennis courts and pickleball courts. They have the swimming pool. They have a really lovely outdoor patio area that people congregate to for happy hours in the evenings and on the weekends and stuff. 
They do have the uh, Harvey Pinnock room. It's a men's only dining room. And um, so it's, it's pretty old school in that regard, but it's, it's kind of just one of those things you walk in and it just oozes that luxurious feel you would expect from a club that's been around since 1899. This is Austin Country Club's iconic view towards the Pennybacker Bridge. Here we're at the back of the clubhouse. Nice area to hang out in the evening. It overlooks the putting green as well as hole number one in the distance out there. This rock formation here is the tee box for hole number 10. And you can see right up the fairway there to number 10. This hole is a short par four, number 14. If you hit a good drive here, you are likely to have a sand wedge in your hand hitting into the green. This view is from the back of hole 18. You tee off up there, up on the hill, and this is a tee off from hole 18 right here. Oh, wow. So here is, here's our, all these red dots here on the map, by the way, are the golf courses we're gonna cover today. So we're gonna come from Austin Country Club here to our next closest in town, the Westlake Country Club. And Westlake Country Club is in the Eanes ISD as Austin Country Club is. The average sale price around the Westlake Country Club is $2 million. This course was built in the 70s, in 1970 to be exact. However, they just had a major remodel last year in 2023 and they've undergone some serious rebranding. So it's now called Westlake Country Club, whereas before it was called Lost Creek Country Club. The initiation fee at Westlake Country Club is $85,000 and the initiation fee at Austin Country Club is $100,000. Now, Austin Country Club has a waiting list a mile long, um, and you just, if you wanna get in, you might as well get on it now and get you some good letters of recommendation from current members. Westlake Country Club is approaching capacity. The last time I checked, they were not at capacity, but they're very near. So you wanna go ahead and get on those uh, waiting lists sooner than later if you're thinking about being a member at one of these private golf courses. As for the amenities at Westlake Country Club, they have multiple dining uh, experiences, kind of different levels. You have your outdoor kind of sports bar, patio level, all the way up to your fine dining dining room. And they have multiple tennis courts and they all just got resurfaced and redone as well as the pickleball in their remodel in 2023. They have a beautiful swimming pool. They host multiple little swimming events. Um, because it's an Olympic length pool. It's, um, it's a really nice club, fitness, fa fitness facility as well. Westlake Country Club, formerly Lost Creek Country Club, sits right in the Barton Creek Greenbelt. And last year, 2023, it had a big course redesign and is ready for play now. So next we'll pop right here be from uh, Westlake Country Club. We'll pop right over here to Barton Creek Country Club. Now Barton Creek Country Club has three golf courses in town and one out in Spicewood. The three golf courses in town are where we're gonna focus our price pricing, um, the, leave the Spicewood out for another time. So average close price around the golf courses of the three in town is $2,300,000. The courses were built at different times. The Fazio Foothills was the first one built in 1986. Then the Crenshaw was added in 1991 and the Canyons was built in 2000. The Canyons still has some, uh, a very little, but some new construction going on there. So the prices in the Canyons are going to be a bit higher. And those average square price, uh, or those average um, home close prices are $3,800,000, so quite a bit higher than the others just because it's new construction over on that portion. As for the Barton Creek amenities, well, they have more than anyone else because it's so huge and it's also home to the Omni Resort. So they have multiple fitness centers, multiple swimming pools, um, all kinds of outdoor activities, multiple practice areas and driving ranges. They have a little mini putt-putt golf for the kids, uh, spa, huge, I mean, enormous spa facility, wellness center. So Barton Creek would have more amenities than any of the other golf courses in town simply because of its enormous size. 
Barton Creek Country Club. We've got three courses here with three different designs. This one is Fazio Foothills, the original one, and this is hole 10. This here is hole number one, a par four, just down and to the right. This is a beautiful gully between a par, four, par five and a par three. Has a nice running waterfall all through there. And you can see how you've got to keep it in the fairway so you don't end up in the water and or these beautiful live oak trees. So we're coming up on the par three here. Not too long, but you have to hit it the right distance or else you end up here in the scenery in the waterfall. Now this is a sweeping view of the Crenshaw Core course. And the Crenshaw Core course is known for its huge greens because Ben Crenshaw helped design it. And as we all know, he was one of the best putters of all time. Now we're heading over to the canyons. It was the first resort course in Texas to be certified as an Audubon International Sig Signature Sanctuary. It's a great course. This is the back of the clubhouse here, obviously at the driving range. The Bobby Dean Club Fitting School is also there. And this is a sweeping view of their short game practice area. Phenomenal. All right, so we did Austin Country Club. We came down here into Westlake, over to Westlake Country Club, then to Barton Creek. Now we're just gonna pop out a little further on 2244 and head out to Spanish Oaks. Spanish Oaks Country Club is um, uh, one of the newer ones in town. The average closed price out there is 3,500,000. This course was uh, built in 2008 and the membership there just recently became full, so it's kind of one in, one out at the Spanish Oaks Club right now. And the initiation fee at Spanish Oaks is $200,000. As for the amenities at Spanish Oaks, well, its main focus is golf, but in the greater community, they have an enormous swimming pool with kind of a sandy area that has a beach volleyball court and a basketball court. They have a fishing pavilion or a fishing pond that they have a pavilion out to. You can stand up on the deck and um, I think they have like four or five species of fish in there. Of course, they have the largemouth bass. So Spanish Oaks is a little bit more separated for their amenities because at the golf area, it's specifically focused on the golf community. Spanish Oaks, designed by Bobby Weed and ranked among the top courses in the state of Texas. Spanish Oaks is known for their comfort stations as well. You will not go hungry on this golf course. You'll notice there's a lot of brown in the background. That was from uh, last summer. We had so little rain, but you can also see how they keep the fairways, greens, and tee boxes in impeccable condition at all times. Wow. We're heading over a ravine here just to give you an idea of some of the areas you have to hit it over when you're teeing off. This course has also been designated as a certified Audubon Cooperative Sanctuary, so very environmentally friendly out at the Spanish Oaks. All right, going from here to Spanish Oaks out to the hills and Flint Rock Falls, it's right in the middle of Lakeway. The Hills Country Club has been around since the early 80s. The Hills was built first in uh, 1981. Flint Rock was added in 2002. So if you combine both of those communities together, the average sale price is a million one hundred thousand dollars. However, the Flint Rock Falls side, it, you can expect a higher price per square foot because it's newer. They didn't start building homes there until the early 2000s and there's still a little bit of new construction in Flint Rock Falls to this day. So you can expect, expect a little higher price in there. As for the amenities, now the Hills has one of the best golf practice areas in Central Texas, in my opinion. They have what's called the Academy of Golf. They have a double-ended driving range. You have one end at the Hills and the other end up at the Academy of Golf. And they have three par three, or sorry, three practice holes. Here's the view from the back deck looking out onto the golf course from the hills. Just wanted to show you that real quick. But they have three practice holes at the Academy of Golf, a par four, a par five, and a par three. Bunkers everywhere, so you can go and take 
uh, your practice from any distance to the green and hit into the greens. They have an enormous putting green, a big pitching area over kind of a little dip and things. So you, if you want to practice your game, the hills might be the best place for you. They also organize little um, live music out there on the weekends from time to time. They have a fitness center. There's also the world of tennis, and it is just that, a world of tennis. Lots of tennis courts, indoor and outdoor. Another fitness facility and spa and things over there. So the hills and Flint Rock Falls offer a lot out in the middle of Lakeway. And that average price point is a million one hundred thousand dollars. Mentioned the initiation fee at the Hills and Flint Rock Falls is ninety five thousand dollars, and that includes both courses plus the Live Oak and Yopon course. So, the ninety five thousand is the premier membership that gets you all of that. The Hills of Lakeway. This is the back of the clubhouse overlooking the fourteenth green and the sixth green. Hole number one also tees off there. This is a view of hole 18, the sweeping par four with water all down the left. It is a tough finishing hole, but great hole. This is the signature hole number seven, par three over the beautiful ravine and scenery. Now we're jumping over to foothills here. I uh, sorry, the Flint Rock. And this is the back of the clubhouse at Flint Rock. And um, this is a par four. You hit down the fairway there and then uh, go over the little creek bed. And then these are some examples of some houses right on the golf course. Another par four, you hit to the landing area down there and then over the ravine to the green. So we're heading back around. This is where we were over here at the hills. Now we're heading over here to the UT Golf Club, my alma mater, of course. Um, the UT Golf Club is an enormous um, um, planned urban development. This is 18. You're like, you can picture yourself up at the clubhouse looking out on 18 green there. And the UT Golf Club, the average sale price is around a million dollars. And the course was built in 2003. As far as the amenity goes, um, they have a lot of tennis courts there as well. They have a fitness center and they have, um, parties around the football season in addition to many other activities of course but they have um, kind of pep rallies on friday evenings before the big football games so that's something that's kind of unique to the ut golf club so if you're a ut alum you may be leaning towards this course and then when we skip over uh, back to the ut club that one is eighty five thousand dollars initiation fee the university of texas golf club this is the rear of the clubhouse with the dining and uh, restaurant outside part in the back there. And we're sweeping over to the 18th green there. We were out there early in the morning. There's still dew on the grass. Uh, this is home to the men's and women's University of Texas golf teams, my alma mater as well. It's a lovely patio that you can eat under after you finish play and watch all the scores come in. And then we're panning back over to the outside dining area. This is from the tips on hole 17, such a gorgeous view out over the green space. And it's a shorter par four. This is 18 coming in, zooming in on the clubhouse. It's a tough finishing hole. It's long, you have the creek all running all the way up the left side and bunkers protecting the right. Long par four here, I've got a hybrid into the green. I'm gonna say I made birdie. This is the Jordan Spieth lower 40 all par threes so you can really dial in those wedges and improve your short game. So now we swing from the UT Golf Club and go not too far right over to the River Place Country Club. Think of River Place as having big views but perhaps not as um, idealistic of a golf course as um, you might want. The River Place initiation fee is only $10,000. That is our lowest initiation fee of all the private clubs in town, so it's an easier one to get into. The price, the average closed price on the homes is $1,150,000. Still pretty high average closed price, and that's because you can just expect huge views out there. A lot, see these houses back up on the hills up there? That's what River Place is known for. They're, um, main road that goes through town is Big View Drive. I mean, it just has a lot of hilltop locations and that's what drives that price point up to um, $1,150,000 on average. This, the course was built in 84 and it has, you know, a lot of uh, kind of 
blind tee shots and dog legs, but nonetheless, it is absolutely gorgeous out there. You would, you would love it. The amenities, they, it's kind of an older club, which is why the price, the entry price is a little bit lower, but they do have the fitness center and they do have tennis courts and pickleball courts out there as well. River Place equals big views. The pro shop is in the white building in the top left of the screen there and you can see how the course meanders through all the valleys in between all of these big hills. It's absolutely beautiful. This course is not very long but it's tough with lots of blind shots over hills and around corners. Course knowledge is a huge advantage here. And then this is the swimming pool area, kids playground and it's up on top of the hill, same level as the clubhouse. And then just below down there, we will have all the tennis courts and pickleball facilities for all the club members and the social memberships. So to give you a little preview, we started here at Austin Country Club and we went down here to Westlake Country Club, Barton Creek, out west to Spanish Oaks, then to Lakeway to the hills, back into Steiner Ranch for the UT Club and then River Place. Now we're coming up right here to the northwest corner of town near the Arboretum for Great Hills Country Club. Now, when I was in school, this was our home course, and this is number 18 right here. You tee off up high, you land down here in the fairway, and you walk all the way uphill. It's a killer finishing hole. Uh, homes there, average close price, $770,000. The course was built in 1971. The word on the street right now is that they're about to do, they're about to close down for a remodel. It, I don't think it's been voted on yet, 100%, but, um, and they're, because they're trying to figure out if they should close down a nine at a time or all 18, but expect something coming up soon. They've already remodeled their clubhouse. It's really nice on the inside. They built a lot of this outdoor seating on the outside. They have um, wonderful swimming, um, tennis, uh, fitness center, all the amenities that you'd expect from a, uh, a nice country club. Great Hills Country Club equals Great Hills. This is number nine. You tee off up high there on the right side and you hit it down into this fairway and then up to an elevated green. And when I was playing at the University of Texas, this was actually our home course for the Betsy Rawls tournament each year. But you can see up there in the distance that rock wall hitting up there to the number nine green, it's a tough shot in. This one here is the back of the clubhouse overlooking the practice green there. And then this is a par three number seven. We've got the green in the foreground and then the tee boxes in the background there. So seven comes into the clubhouse and then eight, nine come back to the club, go out and back to the clubhouse. This is hole number one. It's a par five start, pretty easy hole to get started on. This one here is a par four. It's a layup hole, so you not only have to hit it the right distance, you have to hit it straight and hit it in this little landing area, and then you hit it over the creek up to the green. Great hole. This is the final finishing hole, number 18, par five, completely uphill. You tee off there in the background, up high, ball goes down low, and then it's uphill all the way. So we go here from Great Hills, then we go up to Cedar Park, Twin Creeks Country Club. Twin Creeks, another one in the hill country. You can expect big sky views There's as, there as well. Oh, and before I carry on, uh, Great Hills initiation fee is $50,000. Fast forward to Twin Creeks. Twin Creeks is another low entry to barrier at $15,000. The price, uh, average closed price for homes there is $800,000, and the course was built in 2000, so the homes are a little bit newer here. Um, Twin Creeks, if you live in the Twin Creeks community, it is mandatory membership to the country club, at least for a social membership. Twin Creeks is another hill country course, elevated tee boxes, as you can see in the distance there, that's where you tee off way up high. You can see the cart path kind of meandering down the hill there. This one was designed by Freddie Couples. All right, now we're gonna go to the exact opposite side of town. So here's Twin Creeks up here. Now we're gonna come down here to the southeast part of town to Onion Creek. One of the other originals, not as old as Austin Country Club, but this one was built in the 70s. It used to host the Legends Golf Tournament back in the day. And another low barrier to entry here at only a $15,000 initiation fee. 
also one of our lowest price per square, uh, sorry, closed price on average to get in at $675,000. So if you're looking for a little more value, this might be the answer for you. Um, some some one thing you have to be um, careful of when you move down there is just it, it is on the Onion Creek and so some of the area is in the floodplain. It is just something you need to be take you know take it do your due diligence on the front end and you're fine. Um, both my mom and dad live in Onion Creek and it's not a problem but you do need to know that it can flood. So average close price there $675,000 a little bit lower barrier to entry on that initiation fee because the club is a little bit older and dated. It has an enormous um, swimming pool, tennis courts, um, great facilities, but they're just a little bit older than some of these other clubs and that is the reason you can get in for a little bit lower amount of money. Onion Creek Country Club has 27 holes. The original 18 hosted the legend of golf back in the 70s and 80s. This water you can see in the middle is actually Onion Creek. And here I just had to show you a flavor of the wildlife. There are deer out there all the time and turkeys and sometimes a fox. Here's the back side of the clubhouse, the huge swimming pool and overlooking the par four number 10. As you can see, the golf communities are across the board. We've got from the northwest side to, at Cedar Park down to the southeast at Onion Creek, you've got some more flat terrain, more hill country terrain. Most of our golf courses are built on the west side in that beautiful hill country because it just creates such a nice topography and elevated views and greens and things like that. There are other differences, the amenities, the activities, the luxury lifestyle, the price points, all of those things. I hope that we've given you some insight in the things that are important to look for to help you make the right choice on the front end. So if any of these communities resonated with you and you want to see some in person, give us a call, shoot us a text or send us an email anytime. We're always available to help you find the perfect home that matches your lifestyle. Until next time, I hope to see you on the link.